All right, let me see if this epilepsy thing I wrote is working. Seems to be going. So I gave it 200 articles um, from PubMed to analyze and basically create a, I guess, a global JSON kind of object. So we're using chat GPT or I guess GPT-4 um, more accurately right now to summarize these epilepsy articles that I am pulling from PubMed. You could see the PMIDs and kind of that yellowish color and you could see the JSON. So I feed it the article and then sort of JSON comes out, if that makes sense. You know what I should do? I should put the JSON in there and I should probably change the token, the token limit or something. Let me see. How did I? JSON. JSON? Um, the max input length is, it doesn't really go on input length. It actually goes on the combination of input length and output length. And the total is like 8K. But when you call the API, you call it with max tokens, which I think is max output. But I'm not sure. So I'm going to tweak that down a little bit. And then I want to sort of annotate, let's see. That would work, I think. Um, kind of everything's in that try block. I think that's how that word's supposed to work, but because it'll return a message. So weird. It'll return a message that's like, you use too many tokens or whatever. Um, yeah. And this is after like doing a whole rack of these. So like what I'd like to do actually is maybe start with this plummet ID and kind of go the other way around. And then find, let's see. Oh, so, so you don't actually have that abstract, so you just have the PubMed IDs? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm using this old program I have that goes through each PMID. Okay, so this one, let's see what the issue is. Okay, because like if you want, I also just have the abstracts. Right, right, right. No, I, I do want that too. But so what, what basically this is, is this is the prelude to your program. So what I'm trying to ask is like, is it better to manage state outside of the LLM? Or is it better to, yep. you know, encode it somehow in the LLM, yeah, yeah. whether it's through fine tuning or through, um, you know, doing the weights properly or whatever? Um, and I don't know what the answer is, but I think we're going to end up doing a lot of like double blind studies. So I'm taking a relatively narrow uh, corpus, uh, which is epilepsy, it's illness I, I know relatively well, and I can use sort of my own human knowledge as an expert um, and see if I can use this like state object, which is going to be enormous and probably not too useful. So I'm going to have to, it's like going to populate this now, and then I'm going to use OpenAI to then truncate or collapse or uh, de-sparse maybe is the right word the big state object until there's a very solid and dense corpus on epilepsy. Uh, 200 PubMed articles does not make you an epilepsy expert. So I probably have to train it on the 20,000 or more. There's probably 100,000 papers on epilepsy in PubMed. Let's see what that number is actually. And um, the issue that I think I, I fear, okay, 175,000, so quite a number. Um, of articles less than 1%, but uh, still an enormous, close to 1% of all articles in PubMed mention the word epilepsy. And so my fear is that if I, uh, no matter what modality is chosen, there's going to be this like poor, poor reasoning ability to determine, let's say, something that's, um, I don't know, a, a edge sort of, uh, how should I put it? Like something that's more like academics don't trust or believe in. What do you call that? Something that's like a, a fringe theory uh, versus something fringe that's theory, like, yeah. yeah, standard. So like, how do you get the computer to reason about 
okay, vagus nerve stimulation, for example, I just seen on my front page here, is, is generally thought of as a fringe therapy for epilepsy that doesn't work very well. And how do you get the computer to really pick up on that very subtle thing that only somebody who's been in epilepsy for a long time would know? And my fear is that is the obvious, which is that the person who's been an epileptologist, a subset of neurology, for years and years has been studying this field, talking to their peers, seeing patients. All that experience is very hard to, you know, simulate, condense, and, and feed. I'm going to do my best uh, through this literature, but it's, uh, it's going to be interesting. The other piece of this is how much do the LLMs trained on their own bring to the table? In my experience thus far with at least GPT-3, I'll try a bit with four, is they bring pretty limited knowledge. I mean, they're not very good at like detailed clinical knowledge of anything. Um, and I don't know why that is. Uh, so I don't know if, if we retrain or we do this like weird meta state, which I kind of like because you get the best of both worlds. Like, because you can't de de-learn the LLM, right? You can't take anything out of it, really. So, like, what it knows, it knows. Uh, the theory I have is I can augment it with this very, like, traditional database JSON object that's made by ChatGPT or GPT-4, but it's, um, you know, it, it encompasses all of the knowledge of, of PubMed. But my approach here is fairly weak because... I'm basically getting a new key or a new object, basically, uh, which I'll merge into one major object. It's an array of objects for now, but then I'm going to sort of take it and have it, uh, you know, merge itself into one major object. The problem with that is that, you know, the weighting each paper or each journal is not easy or whatever. Maybe I can assign some kind of weight or something like that, but like, Sometimes that's not even the way to go. So it's very weird to like think about like, well, is, is this the way to do it where you have like, it's equal weighting basically all the contributions. And we all know that not every paper written has, deserves an equal contribution to science. In fact, most of them don't. So those are some of the things I'm wrestling with. And I think just experimenting is a good start because we don't need the answer today. But I do think having it reason about the literature, which is something every doctor in their field would love to be able to spend more time uh, with their literature. Um, I'm not even a doctor, I would. Uh, it's fascinating to read about these diseases, but there's no great way to, uh, to do that as a physician. Now, a machine can do it instantly, as this one is doing, and tirelessly. But is it really going to retrieve valuable information, or is it just going to convolute it all like you need the doctor to almost be like not autistic where the last thing you would want if you had epilepsy is to go to a doctor who said, well, in 1860, in 1963, you know, the first paper on this disease came out and then in 1982, like, is it really that useful to be able to know all that when, you know, it may not be that important. And I think that LLMs do a good job of like separating the wheat from the chaff, but like there's still a, this kind of like, you know, I'm not sure that every case report in the history of epilepsy is, is going to be a valuable thing. And in fact, it could be a net negative. And I think having a scoring function, I think this is what OpenAI has talked about a lot lately, right, is, is how do you get like this independent score that we can use to do a little reinforcement learning or other just grading like, okay, this got worse. This is palpably worse than before when we didn't have all the epilepsy knowledge. It's actually better at this without all that knowledge. Um which again would be hard to believe, but it's possible. So it could be an epilepsy quiz. It could be, you know, a number of different things. It'd be very interesting. That, that's actually a pretty good, decent endpoint, right? Is is we can give an epilepsy quiz where I can ask a couple of epileptologists if they agree with my Q and A, give them twenty questions or a hundred, and if this sort of epilepsy GPT beats. Um, uh, GPT-4, and another question would be, would it be like a llama that's just trained on the epilepsy corpus or a GPT-4 that's fine-tuned on the epilepsy corpus, which one would score the highest? And my goal, of course, is that this method would score the highest, but 
the devil's in the details. It gets, I think it is garbage in, garbage out, because what I'm doing right now is probably closer to garbage than anything else. And I think that this JSON that it's spitting out is okay. Uh, it's not great, <laughs> but we'll have to see. It must be awfully late over there. Uh, yeah, it's about midnight in two minutes. Oh, okay, not so bad. Yeah, it's not too bad. I, I mean, I've been awake until like three, four for the last month just with the animals. So. Where are you? Are you in it's South great. Africa, London? I'm in London. Uh, I'm in Oxford. Four hours. Oh, cool, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, so we've been hard at work. Um, I want to actually have something out on App Store or Google Play Store or whatever it's called um, relatively soon. I know our partners are hustling to get those approvals um, or at least like accounts set up. Approval probably takes a couple of days. We have plenty of engineering to do, but um, probably regulatory regulatory issues are probably the biggest thing we probably should spend a little time on because product itself can always change, right? That's uh, very malleable. <laughs> uh, running it through some some attorneys is probably a better, pretty good idea. So that's kind of one thing. And then I, I need to sort of connect to, to a data store of some kind to hold all this information and try to uh, try to get it to uh, to do some QA and QC and some storage wouldn't hurt. And then speaking of storing, <laughs> uh, making sure that either we get a HIPAA waiver or a hold harmless waiver by using this app, you, you know, basically are agreeing you won't sue us, you're agreeing this, you're agreeing that, uh, and so forth. And I think that might, that might be uh, the way to go. So here is an attempt for me to feed Dr. GBT the entire body of epilepsy uh, information. Um, unfortunately, I am not as good of a programmer as I am at other things, but I'm going to see if I can figure out what went wrong here and figure it out. Huh, looks like I had a bad connection or something like that, which is a tragedy because um, this thing was parsing all this stuff. So I probably need to save like every time it parses it to save it. So I don't have to do this from scratch every time. Any questions? Uh, AI and education. That's a really good point. Um, I, um, I think what Khan Academy is doing, they're rolling out like an AI tutor. I think that's really great. Um, we definitely have a website. Uh, there's no call to action right now. Um, I appreciate you guys listening. Um, hopefully you'll see billboards for Dr. GPT soon. Um, TV ads, God knows what, but right now we're, we're, I'm just, uh, just chit chatting. I don't think most jobs will be useless. Um, let me see here. I want to write the file. Let me see. I probably want to overwrite. I could do it a few different ways. Probably just write it every time, right? I'll just overwrite it. So the most recent one would be. A lot of questions. Do we have funding for this? Uh, yeah, we have some investors. When will Godel be released to the public? Um, that I don't know. I was thinking April or May, but we'll see. Um, uh, Tree has a good comment. Yeah, I think that there are going to be doctors. We have a doctor mode. So basically you can use this product as a physician to get a second opinion or to think about your case a bit differently. Prescriptions are a big question. I agree. Um, there is no, uh, incumbent in this case. Um, I think modes and software are very poorly understood. The funny thing about software is actually very easy to make <laughs> most software. Um, I know I have, I have a lot of engineer friends who are rolling their eyes right now, but like the biggest moat in software is, is product quality and, um, really making a great product that works all the time. Um, that's the hard part. Um, really understanding your customer and making a product that delights them. 
it's not easy to do. Um, can you make a working Kanban board? Yeah, anybody can do that. Can you make Trello? Different story. Trello works really well. Trello's a great product. Can you make something like Jira? Tonight I can make something like Jira. But can I make Jira? No, I can't. I'm not Atlassian. They're very, very good at what they do. So chat GPT is not what we use. We use a very, very complicated system that works with the OpenAI API to, to get answers. And um, I think if you, you can just go to ChatGPT and try to get medical advice, but uh, we're gonna make sure that you'll see that our, our, our system's superior. Otherwise there would be no point in making it, right? Epic EMR, yeah. I, I actually, in this talk I gave, um, that's one of the things I mentioned is that EMR, EHR is a really difficult sort of system to um, break the stronghold of, especially because you have this generational concept where all new babies would basically have to be on some new decentralized system, which is not going to be easy. So I've never heard of this epilepsy once in my life. Idiopathic benign Rolandic epilepsy, also known as benign childhood epilepsy with central temporal spikes. Holy moly. <laughs> you know, imagine being the doctor that figures all that out. <laughs> 